India is an agricultural country with 62% of people engaged in agriculture for their livelihood. With the passage of time and an increase in population, the demand for food has risen extensively. Earlier, this was tackled through traditional farming and better management practices. However, it resulted in a very small increase in yield. It was only during the 1960s that the Green Revolution brought about a drastic increase in the production of high-yielding disease-resistant crops like wheat and rice by employing plant breeding techniques. Plant breeding involves crossing between plants with desired characters to produce offspring that possess the superior characters of both their parents. It dates back 9,000 to 11,000 years ago when conventional plant breeding was practiced. Conventional or traditional breeding is crossing plants for desirable characters sexually through self or cross pollination or asexually through grafting. Most of the major crops such as wheat, rice, and maize are the result of conventional breeding. On the other hand, classical breeding uses techniques such as mutation or tissue culture, followed by cross-breeding of pure lines and artificial selection of plants. The desirable characters of plants generated by plant breeding include high yield with quality, tolerance to different types of environmental stress, resistance to microbes and pests. Plant breeding is commonly carried out in government research institutes and some private organizations and involves several steps. The first step in plant breeding is the collection of germplasm of a particular crop that is intended for breeding. Germplasm is the collection of all the genes of different varieties of a particular crop in the form of seeds or plants. In this way, the naturally available gene pool can be utilized for breeding. The second step is the selection of superior parents. Here, two plants with the different desired characters are selected from the available germplasm. Then, they are made to self-cross to get a pure line of those varieties. The third step is cross-hybridization of the superior parents. This is done by collecting the pollen grains of one parent plant and placing them on the stigma of the other parent plant. However, the hybrids obtained may not contain all the desired characters present in the superior parents. In fact, one in 1000 or 2000 hybrids obtained may contain the desired characters of both superior parents. Hence, this step is considered cumbersome. The fourth step is the selection of superior hybrids. The desired hybrid is selected from the thousands of hybrids formed during crossbreeding that possess the characters of both its parents. Hence, it is considered superior than its parents. The hybrid is then allowed to self-pollinate till it forms a pure line of homozygous plants. The final step is the evaluation of the hybrid for the characters gained. This is done by first cultivating the hybrid in a research field under ideal conditions. Later, 
They are cultivated in farmers' fields at different locations for three growing seasons. This helps in comparing the performance of the hybrid against the best crop cultivar available in that area. In this way, plant breeding has increased the yield of many crops, including wheat, rice, sugarcane, and millet. The Green Revolution is a result of using various plant breeding techniques to boost agriculture. During this period, there was a dramatic increase in the production of wheat from 11 to 75 million tons and rice from 35 to 89.5 million tons. The increase in production was credited to the semi-dwarf varieties of wheat and rice that were developed. The semi-dwarf wheat variety was first developed at the International Center for Wheat and Maize Improvement in Mexico by Nobel laureate Norman E. Borlaug. Likewise, the semi-dwarf rice variety, IR8, was developed at the International Rice Research Institute, IRRI, in the Philippines. Later, better yielding varieties of wheat hybrids such as Sonalika and Kalyan Sona and rice hybrids such as Jaya and Ratna were developed in India. In the case of sugarcane, Saccharum barberi and Saccharum officinarum were crossbred to get a hybrid. The hybrid obtained had both the characters of its parents such as a very thick stem with higher sugar content and the ability to grow in northern parts of India. Similarly, high yielding hybrids of millet such as Jawar and Bajra, which are resistant to water scarcity, were also developed in India. In this manner, through various plant breeding techniques, many high yielding crops were developed that helped boost Indian agriculture.